clap your hands and wave your arms. Play the drums and then rock the guitar. So clap your hands and wave your arms. You can play. Death and Resurrection of Jesus My Identity I am fearfully made I am wonderfully made I know my identity I am a child of God I am creative and full of ideas I am not a slave to fear I am bold I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me I am saved because I believe in my heart, Jesus is the Saviour. Jesus was the Son of God. He was always kind and always chose to do right. But even though Jesus was good, there were people who hated him. They did not like it when he said he was the King of the Jews. Some people hated Jesus so much that they found a way to have him put on trial and sentenced to die on a cross. After his trial, the soldiers made fun of Jesus. They put a soldier's robe on him and put a staff in his hand to make him look like a king. They twisted thorny plants together to make a fake crown and stuck the crown on Jesus' head. Then they kicked him and spat on him and hit him on the head over and over with the staff. The soldiers bowed in front of Jesus and made fun of him by saying, Hail the King of the Jews! Jesus is King! Jesus could have called all of the angels in heaven to come and help him. He could have called out fire to burn up the soldiers. He could have even just disappeared. But Jesus did not do any of those things because he knew that the only way to save everyone from sin was to die on the cross. The soldiers put a big piece of wood, a part of the cross, on Jesus' back and made him carry it. When Jesus got too tired, the soldiers grabbed a man named Simon out of the crowd and made him carry Jesus' cross. The soldiers took Jesus to a place called the Skull. In other languages, this is Calvary or Golgotha. The soldiers took off Jesus' clothes and cast lots, sort of like dice, to see who got to keep them. They nailed big nails through Jesus' wrists and heels to put him on the cross. Jesus must have really wanted to stop everything then. Maybe he thought about all of his apostles and friends. Since he knew the future, maybe he thought about all of us who had not been born yet. He must have really loved us to suffer like that. Our Bible reading is taken from Luke 
chapter 23 from verses 26 to 56. Roman soldiers made Jesus carry his own cross. Two criminals sentenced to death by crucifixion were forced to do the same. They were led out of the city to be crucified. A large crowd followed, including women who mourned and wailed for Jesus. What does wail mean? Can you think of what it means? Jesus was weak from his beatings and fell. The soldiers grabbed a man in the crowd, Simon from Cyrene in North Africa, and forced him to carry the cross. They led Jesus out of the city to a place called Golgotha, meaning the place of a skull. Jesus and the two criminals were nailed to their crosses. Jesus was in the middle with the criminal on either side. It was nine o'clock in the morning. The soldiers divided Jesus' clothes among them, the inner garment woven in one piece without seams. It was too valuable to divide, so they cast lots for it. It fulfilled the prophecy of Psalm chapter 22 verse 18. They divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. Those who passed by hurled insults at Jesus, shaking their heads and saying, You said you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Come down from the cross and save yourself. The chief priests and elders mocked. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. The soldiers also joined in the mocking. One of the criminals joined in with those insulting Jesus. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? We are getting our just punishment, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he turned and said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. At noon, darkness came over the land until three in the afternoon. At around three in the afternoon, Jesus called out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then Jesus exclaimed, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. He breathed his last breath. The Roman centurion in charge of the crucifixion, who had been watching Jesus die, suddenly praised God and said, Surely this was the Son of God. As evening approached and the next day was Sabbath, Pilate gave permission for the legs of those being crucified to be broken so they would quickly die. The legs of the two criminals either side of Jesus was broken. However, as Jesus was already dead, a soldier thrust a spear into his side and blood drained out. It fulfilled the prophecy that not one of his bones will be broken. Psalm 34 verse 10 And they will look at the one they have pierced, as it was written in Zechariah 12 verse 10. A good and upright man named Joseph from Arimathea, who was a member of the Jewish council, went to Pilate and asked permission to bury Jesus. Pilate agreed. Joseph took the body of Jesus down, wrapped it in linen cloth and took it to an empty tomb cut in the rock. A large stone was rolled over the entrance. The Pharisees, aware that Jesus had said, After three days I will rise again, asked Pilate to post a guard on the tomb. The tomb was sealed and a guard set on it. 
Why do you think they put guards at the front of a closed tomb? Hmm. Three days later, on the first day of the week, early in the morning, a group of women who were followers of Jesus set out for the tomb. Among them were Mary, the mother of James, and Mary Magdalene. They were bringing spices and oils to embalm the body and wondered how they would be able to roll back the large heavy stone covering the tomb. Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake as an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled back the stone covering the tomb entrance and sat on it. His appearance was as bright as lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so petrified, they trembled and ran off. When the women arrived at the tomb, they noticed the large stone covering the entrance had been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw the angel and were alarmed. Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified, the angel said. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Now go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came closer to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Do not be afraid, Jesus told them. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and they will see me there. Now, let's review some of the things that we've learned. How did Jesus die? Name three miracles that happened when Jesus died. Name one of the things Jesus said while he was on the cross. What did the sign above Jesus' cross have written on it? What day of the week did Jesus die on? Why did Jesus have to die? Remember, Jesus died on the cross and was buried in a tomb. A tomb is where dead people were buried in the past. After three days, he rose from the grave, just like he said he would. It was empty when the women visited the tomb. If we believe Jesus died and rose from the grave to save us from our sin, we will be saved from going to hell, which is a place for the devil and his demons. Our memory verse is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the Spirit. Let's take that again. Our memory verse is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the Spirit. The story of Easter, Jesus' sacrifice. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms, 
and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! <laughs> the Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus come in, come in. and give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the son of God. You say that I am. <laughs> and the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seems okay to me. They found him to be innocent, so Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. What? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, and then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, if you really are the son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, this man truly was the son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day and ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? hey -oh. ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. What a story. Imagine all the things that Jesus went through just for you and I. He went through all of that because he loves us and he does not want us to go to the place 
that has been prepared for all those who do not believe in Jesus. But that's not the end of this story. Jesus rose from the dead so that we can also tell other people that by believing in Jesus, they also don't have to go to hell. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the miracle of the resurrection of Jesus. We thank you because now we know that by believing in Jesus, we are saved eternally. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you have listened to this story and you are not sure if, hmm, when you die, you're going to go to heaven, you're not too sure about it. Well, I would like you to say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for all of my sins in Jesus' name. And that's it. Now you are a new creation. I hope you enjoyed today's story and I do hope that you will tell your friends and anyone around you about the miracle of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we will see you next week Sunday. Enjoy your week. Bye.